Well, good afternoon in Germany. Good morning in Mexico. I'm Cecilia Villanueva, Consul of Mexico in Frankfurt. And it is my pleasure to welcome you today in this virtual roundtable on investment opportunities for German companies in Mexico. This event has been organized together by the Consulate of Mexico in Frankfurt and the Landesbank Baden-Württemberg, LBBW, in close collaboration with the Mexican Ministry of Economy. I am glad to introduce today a group of expert panelists from Mexico and Germany who will present us interesting, updated, and practical information on different database tools and financial supports provided by the Mexican government and the LBVV in order to foster investments of German companies in Mexico and strengthen the links between uh, both countries and, the, and their companies. We will have the opportunity also to know the successful experiences of two companies from Germany and Mexico doing business and collaborating with, uh, uh, with German companies and between them in joint ventures. I'm happy also to have a very considerable number of participants, around 50 persons, representatives from companies, chambers of commerce, government, academia, and other institutions from both countries for whom I am sure this roundtable will be useful. I want to explain you briefly how this meeting will take place. Uh, after we hear the presentations by the four panelists, we will have the opportunity to listen to your comments and we will have a session of questions and answers. And first we will react to some questions we have received so far from you. And then we will open the floor for your, for your particular questions on the presentations as well. We will, I will ask you kindly to virtually raise your hands in the Zoom. And also you may send your questions or comments on the Zoom chat in German, English or Spanish. Uh, we will record this meeting and display it in our webpage in order you can follow up or pass the information presented to other persons who are interested. So thank you very much for participating today. It's, it's a very, very uh, interesting day for us. And I would like now to give the floor to Ms. Gabriele Geiner. Director of the German Center for Trade GmbH, LLBV, to make our introductory remarks. Muchas gracias, Cecilia, and buenos dias uh, a todos. I have the pleasure to welcome you in the name of Landesbank Baden Württemberg and the German Center in Mexico. LBW Group is active in Mexico for more than 20 years. And during that time, we had a quite close relation to the representatives of Mexico and Germany. Some weeks ago, we had a meeting with La Embajadora Cecilia Villanueva, and we were discussing about uh, investment opportunities in Mexico. And I mentioned that we might in Germany might not have transparency on the current economic situation and politics uh, in Mexico, because during the last years, there were so many changes. There were new president and government. There was, was the new free trade agreement, and now the pandemic efforts slowed down the economy worldwide. And I'm very, very much appreciate that Cecilia immediately took up the idea to have an event together to get information directly from Mexico and from Mexican experts. And here we are today. Thank you, Cecilia, and your team giving this platform to all of us. I want to encourage all participants to use this exchange today, get your questions um, answered. And for, for now, I would like to wish all of us fruitful discussions. Thank you very much. And I give back to Cecilia. Thank you very much, Gabriele, for, for your kind words. And now I would like to introduce our first panelist, Dr. Monica Duhem Delgado. She is head of the Global Economic Intelligence Unit at the Mexican Federal Ministry of Economy, who will give us a presentation on investment opportunities in Mexico. Dr. Duhem earned a master's in economics and philosophy from the London School of Economics and a PhD in political and social sciences from Universidad Iberoamericana. Dr. Duhem has extensive experience in the information technology and services industry and has promoted international standards for digital inclusion in Mexico. She has collaborated with governments, civil organizations, and the business sector in projects aimed at disseminating and integrating the digital world, good practices, economic development, and public policies. Uh, Dr. Duhem, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Ambassador Gabriel. It's very nice to meet you and, and hi to good evening to you all in, in Germany. 
I have the pleasure, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see the presentation? Okay, perfect, thank you very much. So I, I will discuss with you a little bit of, of what we have in Mexico right now. Why is it now the, a good time to invest in Mexico and how the, the Ministry of Economic can help you to, to put your investment in a good uh, soil. So as you know, now in Mexico, well, we have access through more than 14 trade agreements. We have access to more than 60% of the global GDP. We are the proximity to the largest global market in the world with similar time zones. We do have talented and technical labor. We do have energy, competitive energy costs and incentive tax incentives in the borders. Also, as we with the implementation of the TEMEC in, in, in 2020, we do have uh, a, po a population of 490 million inhabitants. So 6% of, of the world population we can, we can trade with, with uh, more than $23 billion of, of GDP and commerce of $6.1 billion dollars. So, and also with TPAT, we do have an extra uh, access to a population of 502 million inhabitants. So Mexico does make sense in terms of the dynamics and all the, the reaching that we do have. We also have an infrastructure for commerce. We do have uh, airports and aviation figures all over the country where with low cargo cost transportations and few value chain interruptions. Also with our national port systems, we have more than 58 Pacific Ocean ports, 59 in Mexico. And uh, as you can, as you know, the, this administration is heavily investing in infrastru infrastructure in Veracruz, which is a port that it goes to the Gulf of Mexico and will be connected to Chiapas in, in the Ocean Pacific. So we are investing with 10 uh, industrial poles and two ports at the end of a, a corridor in, in the south part of Mexico that will, will strengthen our possibilities of, of commerce. With Germany, we do have a, a very long uh, relationship, commercial relationship. The net foreign direct investment to Mexico from Germany is uh, up for, of around $28 billion. Uh, the top states where we do receive investments is Puebla and mainly Puebla is related to automotive industry but we also have been receiving investments in, in financial and service and insurance services, construction and information and media. The, the share of her direct investment from the United States is, uh, for the European Union is 15% and the share of Germany from that 15% is almost 5%. Currently, we have more than 2,000 com German companies here in Mexico with investments. Germany is our fifth investment, investor and the second among the European Union. Uh, I think that this is just a, a show that we are a good bet for investment and these foreign direct investment has been growing over the years. What are we doing to, to foster new investments? We are uh, fostering and we are attracting investors from economic intelligence. So what we are doing is if, we, if you do have a specific sector that you're interested in and to invest in Mexico, we do we create some investment plan based on economic intelligence. So we can do analysis on exactly what are the factors such as tariff trade numbers, investment received, the region, the priority sectors, and we can tailor the, the, the regions where your investment will be much more successful in our region. So what we do with complexity, with analysis of complexity 
is once we understand what is the sector you're interested to invest in, we do an analysis and we can really point out at the state or municipal level, where are the areas where your investment will be more fruitful. We studied labor skills, we study wages, we study the supply chain around the sector that you're interested in, and we can help you to pinpoint where in Mexico your investment will be more successful. And we can help you also to talk to the local governments to discuss maybe some local specific incentives that you can have. So what we've been doing in, in, in the area that I that I'm, I'm leading is we are receiving investors, we are working with them to identify where in Mexico is the, the most interesting places to invest according to the value chain, according to the labor, according to the cost of living, etc. We prepare for the investors uh, a set of possibilities. And once the investor made their mind, we also can create some meetings with local and state government level uh, people so they can directly work with them the possibilities of having state or local in, uh, incentives. Finally, uh, for, for procedures of investment, we do have some manuals, some manual relating uh, the how to invest in Mexico. And we are developing here in, in the Ministry of Economy, a one stop window shop for investment. We are creating a, a website portal where we will display in a very straightforward and, and transparent manner all the, the different, the different uh, paperwork that need to be done in order to invest in Mexico from, from immigration to, to acquisition of land, et cetera. We are producing uh, very straightforward lines of paperwork that the investors need to do in order to understand how, what is needed to be done in, to invest in Mexico. We're including costs, we're including time. So once you want to, to invest in Mexico, you also have that pieces of information uh, to understand the cost and what implicates to come and, and to Mexico and start to invest. So part of, of the things we're working here at the Ministry of Economic, we also have in place uh, Data Mexico, which is a, a database that presents in local uh, information on economics of the different regions of Mexico. You can have in Data Mexico information on what we're exporting, what we are importing, by state and even municipalities. We do have also information on, on the kind of work skills and labor force that we have per state and per municipalities. So you also can understand who are our greatest uh, commercial partners by state and municipality. So you can really grab a sense of what is the, the economic picture of Mexico, of the trade that we're we're in, doing in Mexico, and these uh, data that we are presenting in this database is all the time updated with different database that we have agreements with. So it really helps for an investor to understand Mexico, to understand the different regions of Mexico, to understand what are the services that we are producing as well as, as a product. So I also, it's a, another very interesting tool that we uh, have available for, for everyone to, to understand the economics of Mexico. We do have another database, which is called Comercia MX. So in Comercia MX, what we're fostering with the pandemics and with the, the new reality where we cannot uh, create face-to-face -face trade or commercial meetings, we created this database where Mexican companies that are really ready to export can present their products. So we do have a, a first screening of, of those companies that are presented in Comercia. We make sure in the ministry that those companies are ready to export their goods or services. And then once we have uh, 
tested and checked that the company is ready for export, we post their, their products and services in Comercia MX. So if you're interested in, in to buy any Mexican product, you can go to that database and look with what are the companies that are ready to, to provide the good or service that you need. And we also post in Comercia uh, companies that want to buy. So we can have a kind of, of media of network of Mexican firms that want to have something to sell, good or service, and international companies that have that wants to buy something. So we can make really a, a, a collaborative um, network of, of people wanting to trade internationally. So Comercia MX is another platform that we develop in during the pandemic and available for everyone. Just to make an example, now we do have the Expo Dubai 2020. And as you know, Mexico is a big producer of, of liquor, of tequila, of mezcal, and we cannot present those kind of, of goods in Dubai. So we do have a special part of Mexican products that are interested in the market and all the persons that will go to Expo Dubai 2020. And if their products or good cannot be physically presented in, in that Expo, we will you present them in Comercia in the section of Dubai. So it's a, a database. We developed this with the BID and it's a database interesting to start creating network of trade more digital without depending on physical contact or physical trade meetings. Uh, I was talking about the, the, uh, the platform where you will understand what is needed, the paperwork of investing in Mexico. This is a little bit of the work we're doing on that platform. It will be available in December. So you will have general information on what, why Mexico, why Mexico is an interesting location to invest in. You can put inquiries, specific inquiries that will be answered by all the National Commission for Foreign in Investment that the Ministry of Economic is, is the Secretariat. So we are in touch with different government section of the government and we can answer the any inquiry from a foreign investor we will present the paperwork and also we will have to minimize any possible conflict beforehand so those are the platforms that we have developed in, in the ministry of economic in, in in short we do have these platforms where you will have the possibility of understanding Mexico, of understanding how, what the economics of Mexico or trade, uh, of, of trade investments that we, or, or products and or services. And also in the Ministry of Economic, we are here to serve you. If you do are interested in Mexico and you want to have much detailed information on where to invest, what kind of partners you could have in Mexico, talk to the local governments. We are also here to help you and try to find the best location for your investment. Thank you very much. Dr. Duhem, Monica, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation. And I think we will have the opportunity to get back uh, in the question and answers uh, section. So now I will introduce our second panelist, Mr. Folker Helms, Managing Director of LBBV Mexico, who will speak on financing solutions in Mexico for German companies. LNBV Mexico, a subsidiary of Landesbank Baden-Württemberg, was established in 2008 and serves its corporate clients based in Mexico and Latin America, as well as financial institutions with a wide range of local products and cross-border transactions. Financing solutions are offered in US dollars, euros, and Mexican pesos. Prior to joining LBVV, Mr. Helms held several positions at Deutsche Bank in Germany, Mexico, and the Structured Trade and Export Finance team in New York. He has a university degree in banking and finance and a global MBA from Thunderbird University, Arizona. Mr. Helms, you have the floor. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think uh, Mr. Helms is not available at the moment, so we will skip. And uh, well, now we turn to Mr. Jorge Rodriguez. 
Uh, he's the next panelist. He is the managing director of Fine Metal Mexico, who will give us a presentation on another success case of a joint venture between Mexican and German companies. Mr. Rodriguez studied international market and business in the Cristobal Colon University in Veracruz and has been working in Fine Metal Mexico since 2016, where he, he has been office manager's assistant, sales manager, and managing director since 2019. He has extensive experience in assessed performance management structures, business development initiatives, budget and sales forecasts, imports and export processes, and automotive logistics for import and export in Mexico. Mr. Rodriguez, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, perfect. Uh, hello, Jimena, how are you? Uh, well, thank you for, for the invitation for this uh, webinar. <clears throat> Sorry, I am a little nervous because this is my first time with all this. Uh, yes, my name is Jorge Rodriguez. I am Managing Director of Fine Metal Mexico. Uh, let me explain a little bit about what Fine Metal Mexico or Fine Metal around the world do. Femetal produce contact elements and contacting tools for testing electronic components, cable harnesses, and semiconductor chips, yes? Our customer base is the global electronics and semiconductor industry. Femetal is represented wherever our customer work and our products are used. So Femetal has today uh, subsidiaries in Taiwan, Singapore, China, United States, and now uh, north of Africa. So we see ourselves as an international company uh, with a center in Germany. So all this, what I already spoke, it was a, only a consequential that we also came to the Mexican market. Uh, in Mexico is a great demand for our products, especially from the automotive supply industry and as well for the electronic industry. Uh, but I already spoke about this and I want to make it more clear about uh, fine metal products are. Uh, <clears throat> into the automotive area or industry, uh, the brands of uh, this, uh, of the cars, for example, uh, we are into the evaluation of their application into the electrical uh, testings. For example, if, uh, if a car <clears throat> goes uh, 150 kilometers per hour, and then something into the electrical system uh, has a failure, uh, it's not a fault of, of, of the user, and it can damage a lot uh, the situation, yes? So what Michael is doing is, uh, is together with uh, together with our customers to evaluate the, the test application of the wire hardness cables and electronic components. Also, not only in this part, for example, the multimedia area, all these uh, panels that we have in the, in the, into the car has also to be evaluated. Therefore, our products make the contact element for these uh, electronic parts to assure the, the, that the products of, the, of our customers that will be assembled in the car uh, are working properly, yes? Uh, <clears throat> the automotive industry represents 18% of the manufacturing business in Mexico. Uh, this is a huge area also not only for, for, for other segments of, of, of the business in Mexico, if not also the automotive area has enough uh, business in Mexico. So Mexico is located into the fifth place of production in automotive parts in the world. Because of such good business potential, Fine Metal has been already represented in the Mexican market since the 90s by sales agencies, yes? So in the past, before to have an official subsidiary, Fine Metal products were, were already uh, customized, commercialized by agencies, but in 
2008, Fine Metal Management decided to establish an official subsidiary. This decision was also facilitated because of the favorable conditions for foreign companies that were found here in Mexico as well. Yes. <clears throat> also, it's important to say, and we heard already from the last conference, Mexico has uh, free trade markets with 40 countries. In my opinion, this makes Mexico a perfect country for foreign investment, not only into the automotive business, if not in several areas, together with a high skilled workforce. So Mexico is a multi-segment place for investments. Uh, Fine Metal de Mexico today contributes a substantial share of Fine Metal worldwide contact Pogo Pins business. This last sentence <clears throat> means that uh, from headquarters Mexico, from headquarters Fine Metal de Mexico is uh, it's it's very important as around. 20% of the turnover of, of, of the company, it's located or it's, it's done in, in Mexico. Uh, <clears throat> Mexico has a strong automotive industry who represents 18% of the PIB, as well as an increasing electronic industry, which represents 6%. Uh, this industry are major customer of our products here in Mexico. And however, this industry represents a strong potential for the growth of our business here. Uh, this potential has grown steadily over the past year, 10 years, and we have been able to successfully exploit it for ourselves and our customers. <clears throat> Fine Metal de Mexico has been able to increase its sales year after year and we will achieve the greatest increase just this year. Uh, this last also, this last sentence is, imp is important because uh, after the COVID or during the COVID situation in 2020, uh, everybody was really concerned about what is going to, how is going to move the industry about the automotive, in, uh, electronics, and the rest of the industry. But in 2021, the wake up of this industry, talking about the automotive in Mexico is, is, is increasing. <clears throat> we heard in the news that uh, the sales of cars is, is getting reduction, but the brands of cars is still a investment into the new models. So this makes 2021 uh, big opportunities for new projects that will be go out to the final market in 2022. So another po important uh, potential to expand our products and to grow our customer relation lies in the very competent technical application advice and support, which we offer to our customers on site by our competent engineers. Thus, we are not only supplier of parts for the customers, but an important technology partner. This last uh, sentences again, I guess is very important because uh, as a supplier of this uh, industry, <clears throat> to convert your company in a partner of your customer, it's very important because you, the, your customer would not look at you as a normal supplier, if not a, a partner. And this last uh, make you more close to, your, to the needs of your customers. And then you are able to embrace the needs of, of the market. Talking about the four most important areas of Mexico for fine metal, uh, we might mention Tijuana, Chihuahua, Guadalajara and El Bajío area, where mainly it's concentrated the automotive and electronical segments. Uh, but fine metal is present all over Mexico. For example, we can be astonished that Mérida, Yucatán, also it's a place for big companies of manufacturing wire harness for the automotive industry, where our products are used into the test applications. Uh, uh, this part for me is very interesting. 
in and I guess uh, <clears throat> the support of the government in these areas it's important to reach these levels. Uh, I heard and I was really happy to hear last week that the government of Aguascalientes uh, was closing business with Continental Germany in Germany to expand the facilities of this uh, of this company that as well is located in the German Center Mexico uh, to have production lines in Mexico. So for me to see that uh, the government is looking for for investment of a good companies around foreign companies and import companies to come to Mexico, for me, it's very comfortable because it's the way that the government supports the workforce of Mexico <clears throat> to have a, a, better, a better jobs, for example, that the people from Mexico who has studies on engineers on, on other subjects can develop their skills. <clears throat> Four years ago, when I heard that uh, one of our biggest customers was located in, in Merida, Yucatan, my first thought was good because all the time that I will visit this customer, I will take vacations. But uh, I saw and I asked this customer, hey, why you came uh, to Yucatan? <clears throat> for example, uh, and they told me the same, the government of Yucatan also support this uh, company uh, to establish their facilities in a big area, in an industry park in Yucatan. So now this company has two plants in, in Yucatan and a lot of suppliers of this plant, of this company are, al are as well uh, looking to establish themselves near to, to, to this company. So in my opinion, this is good for the industry and for Mexico. Uh, Guadalajara, in another, in another speaking, uh, we call is the, is the electronic, Guadalajara and, and El Bajío area is the electronic place for Mexico. Here are located a lot of companies for electronics uh, <clears throat> around companies foreign companies around the world, not only German companies, which, uh, which is important for the, for the people of this area and Mexico. But I will continue. Let's talk about how business was affected during the pandemic. Well, the, this, this, uh, this is going to be a, really, a really, uh, little bit hard, but the electronic industry was really affected with the COVID-19 if we consider that China, United States, and Europe are the main places in the world where are located companies, that their essential link, link in the industry is to provide the raw material. If, ever, if everybody knows in this moment, 2021, the problem of raw material, it's, it's complicated for, for this industry. Uh, electronic and automotive. Uh, the shutdown of these companies during the pandemic is now making difficult to provide their products to the entire industry around the world, <clears throat> affecting and delays the process of the electrical manufacturing, not only in Mexico, as well in many other countries. <clears throat> so it's important for the companies in this part to be able to create the strategies with their suppliers <clears throat> in order not to not to fall down in, in, in these kind of problems. Fine metal, for example, in Germany, where it's our, our production area is, is, is closing business with our suppliers of raw material for 2022 in order not to <clears throat> create more delays or problem to the industry. Uh, however, I will get back to the 2020 to the 2020, talking about the automotive industry during the pandemic, Mexico <clears throat> de uh, declares this, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, uh, this industry as an essential, making our clients able to open their plants or production facilities and continue having internal manufacturing where our fine metal products were demand. 
So if we remember, <coughs> oh, uh, the shutdown in Mexico was in end of March, April and May, uh, thanks to also to the government and to the industry that were negotiating together, uh, it was able, uh, the government gave to the automotive industry the possibility to open and to continue having production of this, uh, of this industry. So to all together, uh, tier one, tier two, and tier three of the industry, uh, we were able to continue making business and or uh, activities. In consequence of, of all this, uh, our business has changed well, as well. So in Fine Metal, we develop a close communication with our customers using the digital technology. We develop as well logistic points close to our customer for the efficient of deliveries of our products. And we discover that this plus is fundamental into the growing of our relation with our customer and we will keep them for the future. What happened? Well, together we are sitting here using the digital technology and we did the same and we are doing the same with our customers. Uh, some con some states of Mexico are still in, in yellow uh, light, some of them orange light, and the, and the rules that this customer has to, to give the entrance of suppliers is very, is very uh, rough. So in this case, we were able to still close with our customer using this kind of technologies. Even though our, our business is applicating into the technical and engineer uh, segments, it was really funny to see how our customers was into the plant uh, making conference and our engineers in our office or sometimes in home office uh, looking for uh, the solution of, the, of their test application. Uh, but this is one subject. The other subject was to develop a good logistic. So we saw which, what <clears throat> we saw or we study in which of the states of Mexico was or were more uh, demanding our products. And we create locally in these states uh, logistics points like DHL, for example, or FedEx, which uh, uh, were able to deliver our products. So we also create more jobs to the persons or to the people inside these states, giving the opportunity uh, for the people who lost their jobs, uh, giving the opportunity to have <clears throat> uh, yes, this work and to support fine metal or customers to deliver our products on time. <clears throat> uh, to, to count with good employers is also a key for your business. We find a very good qualified workforce in Mexico. In our fine metal Mexico office, we have a slogan that it says, make it happen. So we try to share this <clears throat> slogan to all our of, uh, employers and if we set on a target, we always look to make it happen. Yes, uh, please don't give me a negative answer. Look for the positive answer and make it happen. So it was good that all our employers took this slogan and uh, it's comfortable for myself to see how every target, everyone in the office look uh, to reach it. So continue speaking about employers and government is by most to keep our employers trained. So every year, according to their responsibilities into the office, human resources, employees themselves and myself always look for courses, diplomas where we can improve our skill and knowledge. So, <clears throat> Uh, this is by rule of the, of the government also in Mexico, that the employer has to look for the, for the training 
in, in, during the year of your of your uh, employees. So you need to create together with human resources a list of of courses that, according to the responsibilities of of your employers. Uh, okay, okay, I I will finish very very soon. You need to to cover this. So as well least but not uh, as well last but not least i would like to explain why we choose the german center mexico as our location for the fame metal office after some searching for suitable permis premises when we start to set up a mexican subsidiary we fin finally found a whole of range of excellent conditions covered here in the german center which seems very accommodating to us the german center is a safe place and a lot of companies, a lot of foreign companies look for this and offer a good facilities here in the building with possibilities for extension, which we have already taken advantage three or four times in the meantime. Then the support of services companies in the place like IT for personal consulting, accounting, banking, logistics, etc. is good to, to know this for, for, for foreign companies. All this together is one building in all this together in one building is unique. So I think as you can see, it's also a good place to hold our larger events like today. Uh, this is my participation and I guess, uh, and I hope it was good for everyone. Any question, uh, you can contact me. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jorge, for your for your very nice insights on on how your company has been evolving uh, over the last years. And now I will give the floor to Mr. Luis Alberto Calderon Torres, who, is, who will present the success case of an expanding Mexican company, which has experience in collaborating with German companies and institutions in the state of Oaxaca and in the field of renewable energies. Mr. Calderón Torres is an engineer from the Instituto Tecnológico y de Estudios Superiores de Monterrey and holds a Master's of, of Science in Entrepreneurial Technology in Babson College, Wellesley, Massachusetts. He is a founding partner and general manager of the company Solar Vatio, president of the Cluster on Energy in the state of Oaxaca and vice president of the National Council of Energy Clusters of Mexico. He is an expert in photovoltaic systems and its connection to the electric grid of Mexico and has developed projects with the Federal Commission of Electricity of Mexico. He has participated in different congresses on this field in Mexico, USA, and Germany. Mr. Calderon, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation to the Mexican embassy in Germany. Thank you for all the German people who is in this place. Um, I'm trying to share a presentation. Let me try to, to do it for a moment. Well, we are um, a company based in Oaxaca City, and we do have a cooperation project with uh, the GIZ in Oaxaca. The project is the dual education system in the photovoltaic sector. As you know, all the Germans have this uh, dual education system model. So it is a model implemented in Mexico that seeks to link the practical and theoretical form that is to intertwine the theoretical knowledge developed in the classroom with the workspace, specifically Solar Batio in Oaxaca acts as an articulating company between the ac academy and the companies related to the photovoltaic sector so that the students acquire employability skills in the photovoltaic field. We are a very proudly Oaxacan company, which is located in South Mexico, and we manufacture solar photovoltaic panels and we do uh, install them on rooftops of their clients. This project has a very high uh, social responsibility, not only for the environment, it brings also um, 
education to the to the to the students. What is the general objective of the project? The project promotes the integrated partnership for the expansion of dual education system in the energy sector, specifically in the solar photovoltaic sector in Oaxaca. What are the specific objectives of this project? It's we will graduate 100 students from Oaxaca in the dual training project and we will certify on the competency standard 580 seats. We are incorporating 12 companies in the solar photovoltaic sector to this dual education system. Seven teachers trained in two laboratories. We will implement two equip equipment supra company workshop, which are the laboratories to practice the skills at the school. 36 instructors trained in the dual education systems will also be the specific objective. What results have been obtained at Solarbati by implementing dual education system? As a company, we have the opportunity to, to certify young people which are below the 18 years old of the academy and into the competency standard of CONOCER. CONOCER is a public institution that gives standard competencies to people who is uh, um, who has practices in, in the labor and the work in Mexico. The certification competency framework of CONOCER is the installation of photovoltaic systems for residential, commercial, and industrial applic application. Basically, the students verify the conditions for the installation of the on-grid connected photovoltaic systems, also install the mechanical and electrical components of the interconnected photovoltaic systems, also connect the electrical components and also start of the interconnect photovoltaic system. The dual education in the photovoltaic sector, it's a model that allows boost integration of photovoltaic companies with training potential. Train, trainers and instructors of these companies in the operation and training within the model to train qualified and competitive students within the sector developing competencies in young people below 18 years old. This is the referential framework of the actors involved in the, edu in the dual education. This project is from in one side, the enterprises, the companies, which is the private sector. In the other side is the public sector, which is the academy, the education located in Oaxaca. In the other side, we have the, the partner with the institution, which is the German institution GIZ. And also the, the actors also are the students, the teachers and the instructors at, at the companies. We implemented two laboratories located one in, the, in Oaxaca city and the other one in the isthmus of the Tehuantepec in, in Juchitan. Those laboratories basically serves as a strength to the certification of the students in the standard of competencies of, of the CONOCER network. This means that the students, once they achieve this certification, they can have a better uh, job and they uh, and the better skills to be to the employability in Mexico. The other laboratory we do have is located in the Isthmus of, of Tehuantepec, specifically in Puchitán, has <coughs> the, the production line to produce solar panels. So the students acquire the skills to, to manipulate and to operate equipment, specialist equipment to produce solar panels. We incorporate 12 companies around 
the Isthmus and the Oaxaca city um, who basically do installations and who basically are in the energy sector. Companies such as the names who are in this um, slide. In December 2022, 20, a base percent of 90% of the students who enter in the dual education systems of electronics specialty should be certified in the competency standard EC586, installation of photovoltaic systems in residence, commerce, and industry. By July 2023, they will graduate from the higher secondary education systems and many of them will join to the productive sector with, with a solid base of professional experience based on professional and employability competencies related to the energy sector. This is basically our project uh, located in Oaxaca. In our experience, the related to this forum, the cooperation with the German center is, and the, sorry, the cooperation of the GIZ and all the people who we, we have met from Germany, it's, uh, it's something um, very important for the state, very important for the company. We do have a, a share of the investment of 50% of the project. And basically the reason what we are doing this, um, this uh, dual education is because the companies in Mexico should uh, have a, a, a ramp up of, of, of capacitation and training to their employee, employees. So the, education, the dual education system will help to the company in reducing the investment of training after they recruit, after recruit, recruit these people. So at this moment, I will finish the presentation. Uh, again, thank you very much for the invitation to the Mexican embassy. And I hope uh, um, any, any other question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Luis, for, for your presentation. Uh, definitely the, the dual education is one aspect that is very important in the collaboration that we have with Mexico and, and Germany. Uh, well, finally, I will give the floor to Mr. Volker Hems, Managing Director of LVBV Mexico, who will speak on financing solutions in Mexico for German companies. Um, uh, LBBV Mexico is a subsidiary of Landesbank Baden-Württemberg, was established in 2008 and serves its corporate clients based in Mexico and Latin America, as well as financial institutions. Um, sorry, I, I got the wrong line. <laughs> as well as financial institutions with a wide range of local products and cross-border transactions. Financing solutions are offered in US dollars euros and Mexican pesos. Prior to joining LBVV, Mr. Helms held several positions at Deutsche Bank in Germany, Mexico, and the Structured Trade and Export Finance team in New York. He has a university degree in banking and finance and the global MBA from Thunderbird University, Arizona. Mr. Helms, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Consul Villanueva, and, um, and also thanks to the, uh, the Ministry of Economy and the, the team of uh, of uh, Mrs. Padilla, and uh, and well, thanks to the, the audience for for your interest. Uh, today is a very um, very very remarkable day, um, and also a part of the reason why I was not available uh, earlier. We have uh, not two; we have three events uh, at the same time uh, going on, which uh, is a is a very a nice indication of interest um, uh, from Germany uh, to Mexico. Um, as uh, the consul mentioned, we have been uh, established in 2008. Um, of course, we are located in the German center, where else? And um, this is the first time that I can recall that, that um, there has been uh, such an amount of, of 
interest um, concentrated. So the business environment um, is is good. Um, maybe it has been um, uh, delayed a little bit over the last um, uh, two years, uh, but of course um, the dynamics um, of the economy, uh, the integration um, in in NAFTA or as they now uh, named it USMCA um, it speaks for itself. And um, and our clients, um, uh, it is exactly the same. We have um, companies uh, that we have uh, accompanied to um, on their way to invest in Mexico. Uh, we have others that were already here. Uh, and of course, um, um, our uh, team in uh, here in Mexico with the German Center and and uh, and from Stuttgart are uh, seeing many uh, companies that um, that are looking to to establish um, some kind of presence. Uh, here in Mexico. So um, as LBW is a very um, diverse bank, of course, uh, we, are, we are not only focused on one customer segment. So uh, we are a bank for, for all uh, kind of clients and, and, and sizes. And so um, we, um, we definitely can, uh, can help you um, uh, at least on the part of, of financing investment questions. And um, and to make it a little bit um, uh, shorter, of course, but I would like to uh, simply um, recall um, a company investing in Mexico basically has three options. You can, um, you can have an intercompany financing uh, from your head office. Um, you can have a, a foreign bank um, financing into Mexico, or you can have a, a local bank um, to, to provide you with financing or a combination of the three, of course. And so we are in that uh, last sector. Uh, we are a, a local bank, uh, but we are, of course, also an extension of, um, of our bank in, in Stuttgart. So um, we have that, that advantage that we can offer the local financing with um, its uh, um, many advantages uh, regarding uh, uh, taxes and, uh, and structures of the, um, of the financing itself. And uh, at the same time, we know our clients uh, well um, from our relationship that we have in, in Germany. And the, um, the market itself is, is, is pretty developed. Um, and the, the options are, the, the three that I mentioned, but there are many subcategories. And so you have um, for almost any kind of company, you have uh, somebody there that, that offers to, uh, to finance um, your, your project or your investment, um, depending on the sector, depending on, on the size. Of course, uh, if it's a venture capital, if it's renewable energy, uh, there are so many options. At the same time, we hear from our clients that it is also very difficult. Um, and, uh, and I think it, it's true. Um, it is uh, not, not easy, but um, there, are, there are many possibilities and uh, we, we are happy to be part of the dialogue and, uh, and help uh, the companies in, in, in choosing the best, uh, the, the best structure um, and the best idea and source um, for their financing. It does not have to be a company that is um, that is new to Mexico. It can be one that is already here. It can be one that is uh, changing because they are uh, adding business lines. They are involved in mergers. They're taking up new projects and. Uh, it is a, it is very dynamic. It is um, actually quite exciting to um, to see this uh, all going on. So, uh, with that, um, thanks again. And if there are questions, of course, uh, happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Holmes, for the for the for your words. Uh, I will go now on uh, moving on with the question and answers. We received some questions beforehand from from the participants. So I will start in order of presentation 
with the Ministry of Economy. And I hope, uh, yeah, Monica, thank you very much, Shatya. Yes, so there will be um, some questions. First, uh, what would be the actual investment situation in the sectors of energy, tourism, and logistics between Mexico and Germany? And what is the forecast for German investment for the, in Mexico for the next couple of years? Yes, thank you very much for, for your questions. The exact amount I do not have, but I, I know that in Mexico, we are heavily investing in logistics. So for instance, what we're talking, I was talking about the corridor between the, the Gulf of Mexico and, and the Pacific. We are uh, investing, heavily investing in inf logistic infrastructure, not only to access the East Coast of the United States, which normally for us from Mexico is not a, a, as common because normally we, we travel by land. So. We want to foster logistics in, in the southeast of Mexico so we can reach easier the east part of, of, of the United States and Canada, as well as Latin American market easier. So we're, we're creating that infrastructure with ports, trains, and routes. So uh, uh, the southeast is interconnected. And what we want to do by that is also foster the, the development of the southeast of Mexico with their 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 advantages, which is more mostly today agri-industrial, but we heard from Oaxaca, we hear all the investment that are taking place to really change uh, and making the Southeast more competitive. In terms of, of electricity and, and, and our and our investment there, as you know, that we have a pending electrical reform that is now being discussed in Congress. So, so I, I'll wait to see what happens. But the idea is, of course, we do have the responsibility to ensure that we do have energy in very competitive prices for, for our industry. So, so we're, we're also working on that. And in terms of, of the investment and the possibility for Germany, I do think that we do have in Mexico a very complex economy and we are ready and diverse to really receive any kind of, of of investment. Of course, we have we are very specialized and very strong on automotive industry. That's uh, normally what, what we have received from foreign investment from Germany. But I do believe that we do have a complex economy and ready to, to really foster any kind of investment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Monica. Uh, there are two other questions I will I will put them together. They are both focused on Oaxaca. Uh, which is which are the sectors with investment opportunities for Germany and Oaxaca, uh, and especially how are the plans or which are the plans to promote this investment in the same sectors of logistics, energy, and tourism? Yes, so uh, we, and I think we can try, well, we don't have that much time, but uh, I will, I will, I can send you th through the ambassador specific uh, opportunities in Oaxaca. What we do normally is we use the platform as we see, I, inv I invite you to use Data Mexico, which is in English, and you can choose Oaxaca and it will visualize the opportunities in Oaxaca. I don't have them not right now. I don't, do not have the information, but yes, there are incredible opportunities in Oaxaca that we can pinpoint and send to you. I see also Jorge wants to add something about the Oaxaca. So I will let him that he's in place to, to talk about that. But yes, I, I invite you to use Data Mexico and choose Oaxaca. They will exactly pinpoint the opportunities uh, uh, of what is happening in Oaxaca. I also can tell you in the tourism that uh, a route from Oaxaca City to the, to the beaches is almost finished. So it will really uh, foster the tourism on the Oaxaca beaches from from Oaxaca capital, so that also will will foster tourism. Yes, thank you very much, Monica. I will give the floor to Guillermo Zamora, who is from the Oaxaca government, so maybe he will follow up on that. Yes, thank you, Ambassador and Consul Cecilia Villanueva. Uh, I just will only add uh, that I already wrote my email. If you have a specific questions that maybe there are not answered in the information that the Secretary of Economics send you. I'm all ears and I, I hope I can give you answers by email. Thank you very much, Guillermo. Uh, I will now, um, uh, it, there are two questions for the companies. 
Uh, one is for fine metal, which is what advice would you give to German companies when investing in Mexico? And for Solarvatio is how is Mexico attracting German technology investments? So I don't know, um, maybe we can start, start with fine metal. If you want, I can start. Um, yes, uh, there is also uh, uh, another program that was implemented uh, or supported by the Secretary of Economics, which is the um, uh, a program where you meet German companies and, and in order to, to, to attract this uh, technology from Germany. So right now in Mexico, the relationship between Germany, it's very close. And at the moment in Oaxaca, as we talked before, there is this institution, which is well known as the GIZ, is working with the government and with other companies also based in Oaxaca. So there is a, an opportunity to, to work with the te technology of, of Germany. Sometimes um, some, something that is a, a challenge for the Mexicans is the culture. The culture in, in Mexico, it's completely different in, in and the co corporate culture is also different from a Mexican company to reach out the, the German company. So to, sometimes we have only these platforms or the opportunity between the, 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 the government such as the, right now Guillermo Zamora, it's like a um, link between also the institutions and sometimes the institutions between the companies to to make it strength uh, to, to make a confident communication. So I believe there is uh, now a, um, an open to to the German companies in the technology. So I I will invite them to people who is uh, interested to to link between the institutions such as such as the embassy, such as the secretary of economics and the people right now who is in this forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Uh, Jorge, are you there? Yes, I am here. Uh, what is the question, please, again? Sorry, yes, it's, uh, what advice would you give to German companies when investing in Mexico? Oh, yes, well, uh, the first advice I should say to the German companies is uh, to invest in Mexico. First is to look for a perfect place to, to come, to check the market where they want to invest and to have the, 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 the main logistic and uh, an accounting area for, for, for their business. Uh, Mexico for culture, it's a country that always look for, for how to make it, uh, how to reach the target. So, and also the workforce in Mexico, it's good. So my advice to, to a German companies is to, <clears throat> is to be in contact, for example, in this case with the German center to provide that the German Center can provide all the information related to these kind of companies who wants to invest here in Mexico and to take advantage also for the trade, uh, mark, free trade markets of Mexico. As I said before, 40 countries of these are in this trade market. So for Europe or for foreign, for German companies, this is really good. We are doing the same in Mexico. All our products that are manufactured in Germany, we import from Germany and uh, with this special uh, trade uh, market and it gives us a lot of advantages regarding all the taxes that we can uh, uh, accept with this uh, trade market. So yes, it's, it's good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jorge. And um, then we have uh, two questions for the LLBV, for the bank. Which are the sectors with more investment opportunities for German companies in Mexico now? And are there any plans or strategies for collaboration between uh, the companies, between German and Mexican companies? 
Um, Mr. Helms, please. Yes. Um, well, um, I think there are opportunities in almost all sectors. Um, of course, as uh, um, Mrs. Durham has mentioned, the, um, the, the biggest sector has been the automotive um, sector. And I think it still continues to be because um, despite um, all the changes uh, going on in, in terms of uh, electro um, and, uh, and, and self-driving, we have seen um, now that, uh, that also companies um, investing, uh, maybe not yet the German ones, but the US uh, automakers into that technology and also in Mexico, um, while others are still reinvesting. Um, so that is, uh, still the number one but we do see many other opportunities in um, in logistics uh, in pharma in chemical um, there are of course um, also uh, the exports i mean not talking about the companies that are producing um, in in mexico but uh, the packaging sector textile um, um, food industry uh we have seen um this year especially a large increase in agricultural um uh, uh, in, in investment investments also and um and so there are uh, there's so many um opportunities being being offered that it is almost difficult to ex exclude a sector i mean it's um yeah we are uh, we are open to um to look at uh, at anything. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we have here in the chat some some other comments on the German Center. The, maybe someone from the German Center, Jimena or Tignunge, want to add something on the on the the services that the concretely they are, they were mentioned several times in the presentation. Thank you, Cecilia. Well, actually, the, the German Center in Mexico and the German Centers worldwide are an excellent platform for all of the German companies that are arriving in, a, in emerging markets in order to get practical aid. While you do your business, basically, whatever it may be, we help out with all of the hardware that you need. May it be um, topics of, of your um, electricity, um, everyday questions that you might have, of course, your office, showroom, etc. but different types of providers. As um, already a few of the expositors have said, when you come to a market, a soft landing is very important. Don't get distracted by, by the everyday things that you have to solve. Um, and you can get a lot of um, practical solutions within the house under one roof. Um, the CAMEXA, the um, Chamber of Commerce is with us, uh, many different types of, um, of providers and also tenants such as Jorge, um, who we have consulted a lot during the pandemic. It was actually very interesting. Everybody was in lockdown and the few companies that were coming, we were talking to, finding out the trends, finding out how they were solving things. So this was helping companies a lot. We currently have um, over 100 companies in the in in the building itself, but have um, served over 600 companies in the past 20 years. Thank you, Ceci. Thank you very much, Jimena, for for this uh, complementary information on how the German Center is is working, and especially also the relationship with with Camexa, no, with the Chamber of of Commerce. And um, I would like. Maybe uh, Josefa Tarchundia Villegas from the State of Mexico Investment Direction. Would you like to comment on the experience you have had with German companies in your state? Thank you so much for the opportunity. For us, it's very important to, to be here with, uh, with everyone present. Uh, as I uh, told already to Jimena, it's in the state of Mexico, uh, Germany represents the third country uh, in importance of the FDI uh, uh, companies that, it, that are established here in, in the state. We have uh, uh, 415 companies 
that have invested uh, since the first one established about uh, $3,800 million here in the state uh, in the uh, manufacturer uh, sector principally. So uh, if everyone has any doubt or any, or, or we can help you to establish your projects here in the state, be sure that all the team of the Mexico State will be glad to help you. And if you want more information about the, uh, the companies or, or the inversions that uh, Germany has in the state, We'll be, we will be glad to uh, share with you by this way or by my uh, email and uh, cell phone that I have already posted in the, in the chat. So thanks again to the uh, Economic Ministry and uh, the relation, External Relations Ministry. And thank you everyone for uh, being here. That's all for me. Thank you very much, uh, much Josefat, for, for your comments. And there, there's another question in the, in the chat regarding the mezcal industry and how are the investment plans? Uh, I don't really get the question. Maybe if you would like to take the floor, Raul Mendes. Hi. Yeah, I was wondering about if you going to investment in the mezcal industry. I don't know, maybe in equipment or development of brands. I don't know, maybe uh, something. Uh, maybe the Ministry of Economy has some comments on, on how is the opportunities for the mezcal investment? Yes, yes, and we'll be, we will be gladly, uh, if you want it, if you're interested, to put you in contact with all the association of mezcal. As you know, now mezcal is still very artisanal market, but it's growing and it's growing fast. We do have uh, interesting groups that uh, of mezcal producers that are getting together and, and trying to, to attract investment. We know that we have some exports of mezcal and cocktails based in mezcal in, in Germany that are being very, very successful. So I do believe that there is an interesting opportunity in mezcal and also mezcal derivative. As you know now, the seltzers are being, uh, well, we're exporting a lot of seltzers based I have they have a little of mezcal and we do have not only in Oaxaca mezcal itself being produced but we do have a, a, a set of of young firms very trendy that are really developing very product mm -hmm. seltzers that are very successful right now in the U.S. so uh, yes I do believe that if you want we can mm -hmm. give you information on mezcal and also mezcal derivative products as seltzers that are now they are really growing. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna put my uh, information in in this chat. Uh, very interesting to uh, keeping in touch for this um, um, uh, <laughs> tema. I'm gonna say tema in Spanish. Está bien. This ya topic. I also put my uh -huh. Sorry, I also put my email and with you also had the email of Katia, which also works at our office. So please, any specific inquiry, do not hesitate to send us an email and we can put you in contact with the local uh, producers. We can also uh, help you to find out uh, and describe more the, the sector you're interested in. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I think we, we have reached the, the final step in, in, in our round table. I don't know if there's any more questions or comments. Uh, you can raise your hand now. If not, then yeah, I would like to thank you all for participating, especially the, the, the ones who were presenting today their experiences. Uh, Dr. Duhem, thank you very much for your presentation on behalf of the Ministry of Economy, uh, Mr. Helms, for the LLBV, Gabriele, of course, for all your all your help during the pre preparation of this of this uh, roundtable and all your team, 
uh, Jimena, also for your insights and, and the two success cases that we could present today, Fine Metal and Soral Batio, so that we can have uh, a more concrete uh, reference in, in, in how the, the this investment opportunities in from, from Germany into Mexico uh, can be possible. So thank you very much. There is also um, another email over there from, from the Director of Promotion at the Ministry of Economic Development, so Gerard Olkin. So I think you have enough uh, contacts there to continue the discussions. So thank you very much. Thank you also to my team who helped me out with all the technical issues and well, have a nice morning or afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.